Hello, greetings. I welcome you to today's Bible study. I am Brother Hazana David. Let us pray. God, thank you for another opportunity to learn at your feet. We ask that you draw us closer to yourself even as we look at your word today. We ask that your word will heal every broken bone. Anyway, we are sick in our spirits and in our bodies. Lord, as we hear from you, we ask that your word will be a, the healing balm that will heal us, bind our broken bones, restore our hopes, and help us to know you and love you more. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please, if you are new to this channel, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel and also like and share this video. And the Lord God Almighty will bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So today we are talking about how to know you were saved as a Christian. How do you know you were saved as a believer? Um, before we talk about how to know you were saved, I want to let us know that this topic is very, very important. Knowing that you were saved, like examining yourself to know who you are in the Lord, is very, very important. Why? This is actually what the Bible encourages us to do, that we should examine ourselves. Me, personally, I ask myself from time to time, Hosanna, if you die today, will you make heaven? That's the question I ask myself. It's not because I'm anticipating death, but it is self-examination. Look at what 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5 says. It says, examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobate. So we are to examine ourselves from time to time to see why, to see if we are still in the Lord or we are falling short. How do we examine ourselves? By looking at the Word of God. The Word of God is a standard. Look at the Word of God. Look at yourself in the mirror of God's Word and ask yourself, am I doing what the, what the Lord says? Am I following this Bible correctly? And also, we have the Spirit of God in us too. The Spirit of God is never going to lie to us. The Spirit of God is always sincere. And the Spirit of God tests us if we are still in the faith or not. The Spirit of God bears witness with our spirit if we are children of God. If you, we have our own conscience too, that is the court of the human heart. We have our own conscience. Sometimes when we do some things, our conscience judges us because we are rational beings. We can distinguish between good and evil. So if you are not in the faith, the Spirit of God in you will tell you, your conscience will judge you, the Word of God we tell you, no, you are not doing it correctly. You are fallen. The Spirit of God a lot of times speaks to us, that still small voice, telling us, oh, you, you shouldn't be angry. You are a child of God. Don't do this. Or look at a person suffering. Go and help that old woman. Go and help that sister. Go and help that brother. The Spirit of God speaks to us a lot of times. So, um, to this Bible study, to this Bible study is going to take a while, but I'll try as much as possible to be very brief, if possible. So, uh, before we talk about um, how to know you are saved, let us also look at what are the requirements for salvation. So, let's not even just jump to 
Okay, how do you know you are saved? At the first place, what are the requirements for salvation? So let's consider the requirements for salvation. Uh, I did a Bible study some time ago, and I, I think that was last year or early this year. I talked about uh, what is salvation? And what are the requirements of salvation? If you look at the link in the description box, you're going to see. If you look at the description box, you're going to see the link to that Bible study. But these are five important things. Requirements for receiving salvation. Hear and believe the gospel. Confess Jesus Christ openly. Acknowledge your sins and repent of them. Water baptism. Make the Lord Jesus Jesus Christ the Lord and, and obey God's command. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Make the Lord Jesus Christ your Lord and obey God's command. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. So these are the five um, requirements I talked about. If you break it down, you could get more, but these are the most important ones. And uh, I also want to say that salvation is free. We don't buy salvation. Somebody may ask, okay, if we don't buy it, if we don't work for it, if it is a gift, if somebody paid, so why do we lose it? Well, you can lose your salvation because we are rational beings. Uh, it is not just a gift you are given, you are also admitted into a kingdom. And in this kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, there are standards of living. There are laws. There, are, there is an order. So when you are admitted into this kingdom, there is a way you are expected to live. So the fact that you are told not to steal, not to kill, doesn't mean that you are buying the salvation or you're working for it. It is the free gift of life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So it is a free gift of God. He died for us. He came and died that we may have eternal life. So uh, let's talk about how do you know that you were saved or not as a believer? How do you know? How do you check yourself? So, number one, believe in Jesus Christ. Do you still believe in Jesus Christ? Remember, during, before you get baptized, you have to believe in Jesus Christ, confess your sins, you have to confess Jesus Christ openly too. That confession is very, very important. So when you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you believe in Him, and you have to believe to the end. There were some who believed at one point in time, but could not continue without belief. So do you believe in Jesus Christ, and are you still believing to today? Now let's look at some Bible, Bible verses. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10 says, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So believing is very very important you have to believe not just believing you have to also confess with your mouth now the question is are you still believing if you believed before you received the gift of salvation if that is one of the requirements for receiving salvation the question is do you still believe today or you have left off that belief in jesus christ do you still confess jesus christ today Remember that if you are ashamed of Jesus Christ in this world, in front of men, he will be ashamed of you in the presence of the holy angels of God. So if you believe some time ago and today, you still believe that you can confess him openly. If you are ashamed of him, I tell you, you are not saved. Because you are ashamed of the kingdom of God. 
you can't confess him openly. Some people, when you ask them, are you a Christian? Um, I was born into Christianity. That's not a question. Are you a Christian? So if you can't confess him, if you can't profess your faith in public, if you reject your faith, if you reject your belief in the Lord in public or before men, you are disqualifying yourself. So it's not about be believing some time ago. You also need to keep believing and keep proclaiming, confessing your faith in Jesus Christ. This is important and this is a standard. So if you are saved, you have to continue to believe. And you have to believe to the day you die, to the moment of death. Then also repentance from sin. Have you repented from your sins? A lot of people say, oh, I've repented. I gave my life to Jesus Christ. Okay, do you bear the fruit of repentance? Yes, you have repented, but do you bear the fruit of repentance? How do people know that you have been transformed, you are now a new creature? What is the evidence? As of Apostles chapter 2, 30, 38, when Peter was asked, men and brethren, what do we do? What do we do to be saved? He said, then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So, uh, repentance is very, very important. If repentance is a change of mind, is a change of heart, assuming you were going this way on the Broadway, and you hear the gospel, and you make a U-turn, that is repentance. Okay, if you repented some time ago, are you still living the life you have professed to have come to live? That is a question. So repentance is very, very important. In fact, you can do without it. Without repentance, there is no holiness. Without holiness, you cannot see the Lord. Uh, Matthew chapter 3 verse 8 says, Bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance. So if you have repented, this scripture is very, very important. If you have repented and you are a Christian, do you bear the fruit of repentance? Do you, do you live the life of Christ? When people look at you, do they see your light and glorify your Father which is in heaven? Or you are the quarrelsome type, you are the adulterer, you are the killer, you are the fornicator, you are the thief. If you are born again and you have faith in Jesus Christ, then your faith will move you to do good works. So we don't enter heaven by doing good works, but everyone that is saved does good works because that is the nature of the kingdom. When you are born again, you are given a new heart, you are given a new creature, your old self is modified, and then Christ lives through you. So the life you live is Christ who lives in you, and not actually you. So Christ can be living in you, and you are quarreling with everybody, you don't agree with people, you are always quarrelsome, you are, you are into witchcraft, you are into stealing or killing, scamming, all sort of things. No. There has to be corresponding character. You have to bear the fruit of the Spirit because the Spirit that is in you is the Holy Spirit and you have to bear holy fruits. Praise God. So let's move on. Um, let's read. John chapter 3, verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So, you have to be transformed. You have to be born again. You have to put on a new nature. And this new nature is very, very important because it is the nature of the kingdom. 
the old self must die. Then let's look at the next one, a new heart and a new life. You must have a new life. When you're born again, you have a new life. You have a new life in Christ, as I just explained. One that is saved, if you are saved, one of the evidences that you are saved is that you bear the fruit of the Spirit and that you live a new life. Let's look at what the Bible says in the Old Testament concerning the New Testament. How should a Christian, how should a Christian be when he is born again? This is what the Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 36, 26 and verses 26 and 27. He says, a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit would I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of, that, out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my status, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. So, it's, it's not just washing us, from our sins and admitting us into the kingdom, the Lord gives us a new spirit. He gives us a new heart. And it becomes easy for you to follow the ways of the kingdom, the way of the kingdom, and keep the laws of God, keep the commandments of God. His, his burden, his, his yoke is not burdensome. Actually, you don't struggle not to steal. When you're born again, you don't struggle not to commit fornication. It's not a struggle. It is a lifestyle. It's like you're breathing in air, you're inhaling, or you inhaling air, oxygen, and you are exhaling air. It's, it's as simple as that. That is the truth. So, because when you walk by the Spirit, you no longer fulfill the desires of the flesh. A lot of times, why we struggle is because... A lot of times we're not walking by the Spirit. Because if you walk by the Spirit and you're led by the Spirit, you no longer struggle to walk with God. Look at what the Bible says. The Holy Spirit is put in us. Look at verse 27. Ezekiel 30 is 27. I will put my Spirit within you and cause you, some version says, and move you and move you. And ye shall keep my judgments and do them. So he's going to move you by his spirit. Remember, it is a spirit that is a man that controls that man. If the spirit of God is in you, spirit of God controls you. So when you see people who live the opposite lifestyle and they tell you that they are saved because they confessed Jesus Christ some time ago and believed in him and professed to believe in him some time ago, if they don't live the life of the kingdom that is spelled out in the Bible. If they don't bear, bear the fruit of the Spirit, they are not saved. That is the truth. Because you must live a new life. To be born again is to be regenerated. You are born of God. You, the DNA of God is inside of you. Born not by the will of the flesh, not by the will of man, by, but by the will of God, but by the Spirit of God. We are born of, listen, we are born of the Spirit, we are born of water, and we are born of the Word of God. The Word of God gives birth to us. As you hear the Word of God from time to time, the Word of God gives birth to you. You are being renewed by the Word of God. The Spirit of God that is in you, helps you, moves you to do what is right. The Spirit of God gives birth to you again. So until you are born by the water, the Spirit and the Word of God, you are not born again. You have to be born of these three. Yes, so let's uh, continue. Let's look at uh, Romans chapter 8 verse 16. Romans 8.16 says, The Spirit is a very witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So,
let's continue. So uh, you have to have the spirit, the next one, number four, you have to have the spirit and be led by the spirit of God. It's one thing to have the spirit, it's another thing to be led by the spirit. You can have a captain who is leading the team, but you can choose to follow the captain or not. So it's not about having the spirit, you must also follow the leading of the spirit. You must allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, to direct you. Yes, so let's look at Romans 8, verse 16. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. If you have the Spirit of God in you, one of the ways you know that you are saved is that the Spirit of God in you bears witness with your spirit that you are a child of God. This is very, very powerful. And it is deep. If you are a born again believer, you would know that a lot of times the Spirit of God in you will tell you. If, if you are in line with the Holy Spirit and you are in, 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 the, in the state of grace, you will know that yes, if anything happens right now, I'm going straight to heaven by God's grace. It's not about having a false confidence. And it is not a false evidence too. It is real. When you are saved, the Spirit of God in you bears witness. And this witness is very, very intense. It is strong. It has this ability to convince you that, yes, you were saved. If you are wrong, it convicts you. Instantly that, no, you have done wrong. You have to reconcile yourself back to God. You have to do this. You have to do that. Sometimes when you sin, the Spirit of God in, God in you chastises you. And you have no peace until you confess the sin and repent of it. You have no peace. That's what the Spirit of God does. So the Spirit of God in us bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So you, as a child of God, for you to examine yourself and know that uh, you are qualified, the Spirit of God bears witness. But you must have the Spirit first and also be led by the Holy Ghost. Uh, Romans chapter 8 verse 14 and Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 says, Romans 8, 14, I read, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The question is, you want to ask, you want to check if you are saved or not. The question is, do you have the Holy Spirit? Are you led by the Spirit of God? Is the Spirit of God leading you? Because if the Spirit of God is not leading you, you are not a child of God. You have to, the Spirit of God has to do the leading. Because that is the standard. That is it. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Ephesians 4, 30 says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. If you are sealed by the Holy Spirit, you will know that you are sealed. The Spirit of God in you will confirm to you that you were saved and that you are a child of God. Then let's look at the next one, reading and obeying the Bible. Do you read your Bible? Do you obey it? Uh, some people think that reading the Bible, studying your Bible is not important. If you want to know if you were saved or not, read your Bible. Your Bible will tell you that you are saved or not. If you read the Bible and you obey it, you will know that you are saved. Salvation is for everybody that believes. But making heaven is not just for those who believe, but for those who believe and change their ways and allow the, the word they have heard to affect them positively and convert them. There are some who say they, are, they have believed, but the word of God has no 
effect in their lives. So, you as a believer, do you read the Word of God? How much of God's Word do you have in yourself? And how much do you obey God's Word? 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 15, 16 and 17 says, And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation, through faith which is in which is in Christ Jesus. So the scriptures are able to make you wise unto salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. So if you don't have the word of God in you, I wonder how you're gonna make it. How you going to make it? Verse 16 all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So, the knowledge of the scripture is very, very important. It's not just about reading the word of God. Some people are very good at reading God's word. But the word of God has no effect in their lives. Uh, remember the challenge Jesus Christ had with the scribes and Pharisees, the Sadducees. They had in-depth knowledge of the word of God, but they would never do it. They were never practicing it. That's hypocrisy. Jesus Christ said they lay burdens upon people, but they were not even lift that burden with one of their fingers. They bind laws, even the things that are, that are not sinful, things that are not part of the law, they make them part of the law. But they themselves, they don't even keep the primary laws. And they are multiplying other things and adding them to the law. Look at what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 28 verse 20 teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you Jesus Christ wants us to observe all things so as a believer you have to be versed in the Word of God because the moment you believe you also need to teach others too. to believe you have to evangelize which is one of the things one one of the things that we will talk about it is one of the requirements of salvation of being saved to know whether you were saved or not you have to be evangelizing and what do you evangelize if you don't know the word of god you have to know the word of god and observe all things jesus christ said we should observe all things for those of you who say it doesn't matter how you behave, it doesn't matter how you live your life. Listen, Jesus Christ said, observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. So Jesus Christ expects you to observe all things. If you are not observing all things, I tell you, you will not save. Because this is a command. It is a command to observe all things. So, are you observing all things? It is not, we don't keep the law to be saved. We are saved and then we keep the law because it is a lifestyle of the kingdom. We have been delivered from sin. When I mean law, I'm not talking about the ceremonial laws of the Old Testament. We are talking about the law of Christ, the doctrine of the apostles. For you to navigate through, you need the word of God. That's why Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says, This book of the Lord shall not depart out of the mouth, out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate during day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success so even in the old testament 
The knowledge of God's word and obeying God, God's word was important. For us to be successful, we need the knowledge of God's word. Let's continue. Luke chapter 6 verse 46 says, And why call, why call ye me, Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? If Jesus Christ is your Lord, you have to first of all obey him. And how do you obey him? I mean, you have to first of all know what he commands. And how do you know it? It's by studying the word of God. If you don't know God's word, you're not going to obey it. You have to know the word of God. It's not just, remember what he says. He said uh, in Matthew chapter 7 verse 21, Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. You have to do the will. It's not just about knowing God's word, but you have to do the word of God. If you are saved, you have to do the word of God. So if you ask yourself, am I saved? Ask yourself, do I do God's word? Do I obey his word? Do I have his word in my heart? And do I obey his word? That's very, very important. Now, let's look at the number six, evangelism. If you are saved, you have to do evangelism. Now, ask yourself, do I evangelize? You want to know if you are saved or not. Do you preach Christ? It is a command. A lot of people don't actually preach Christ. That Jesus Christ is in their heart, and they don't want other people to see that Jesus. Let me tell you, if you are ashamed, or you are not occupying until he comes, because it's a command, he said, occupy till I come. If you are not occupying till he comes, by preaching the word of God to sinners and spreading the good news of the, king, of the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom, you are not doing right. This command is called the Great Commission. Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. Even until the end of the world. Amen. So, we are commanded to preach Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. Do you preach Jesus Christ? You are not saved to leave others out. Imagine everybody that is saved. Imagine a situation, everybody that is saved. Nobody preaches the gospel. How will the gospel of the kingdom get to the next generation? How will other people be saved? If, how will they hear if nobody preaches to them? So if you don't go out to preach, who will preach? A lot of, people's, a lot of people don't have the time to preach, to go out and evangelize. But every opportunity you see, please seize it and preach Christ. There is no believer that cannot preach Christ. Telling someone, Jesus loves you. Give your life to Jesus Christ. You have preached. Just telling someone, don't worry, God is going to take care of this situation. Are you a believer? Give your life to Jesus Christ. Believe in the gospel and you shall be saved. Repent of your sins. You could be in a bus. Preach the word of God. Just preach. A lot of people don't have that time to go out and do evangelism. But they do it once in a while when they see the opportunity, whichever we do it. And for those of you who can go out there to preach, I'm not saying there is nobody that cannot preach. Everybody must preach. Verbally, with your mouth. You have to preach to people. Right. Any way you can preach, please preach, evangelize. It's one of the ways you occupy till he comes. And also support the work of God. 
A lot of people don't support God's word. They don't. What they do is they give to prophets who prophesy into their lives. People who have nothing doing about the salvation of the lost souls. But because they have prophetic gifts, whether demonic or godly, people patronize them and give to them. But if they see someone preaching on the street, they don't give them anything. Because they feel, it's not going to give me prophecy. <laughs> but you don't know that it is even more blessed to support the gospel of Jesus Christ. I mean, to invest in evangelism than in investing in a prophet. That is the truth. I'm not saying you should give to your prophets. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying you should give to your church. But make sure you support the work of God. If you see preachers on the street, some of them actually, they don't work. They don't do anything. God told them, don't do anything. Like John the Baptist. He don't do anything. No tent making. No tent making. He don't do anything. They just focus on God's work. Those people rely on people giving them. And one thing is that you can't preach the true gospel of Jesus Christ and be preaching money. People are not going to give you. People are not going to associate into your life if you speak the truth. Because people, naturally, people hate the truth. And with the multitude of false prophets and false uh, pastors and teachers in town, a lot of people have been brainwashed to believe that, oh, this is, if you preach the truth, they tell you this is not the true gospel of Jesus Christ. I remember a man who was very, very angry with me. He told me I'm scaring people away, I'm preaching heresies. Because I said, someone can lose their salvation. He believes that it doesn't matter how you live your life. Once you're saved, you are always saved. That's a lie. So let's try to conclude. As a believer, are you examining yourself? Let's go back to that scripture again. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your, know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobate. Examine yourself. When last did you examine yourself? When last did you ask yourself, am I really saved? Am I saved? I remember a dream I had some days ago about a young man. I used to know and admired so much because of his, his dedication to God. I had a dream I saw this young man. And the Lord spoke to me that this man I'm seeing is not even his child because he has witchcraft. He built his Christianity on top of that foundation of witchcraft, which isn't supposed to be. Ask yourself, even as I ask myself from time to time, am I saved? Examine yourselves to see if you are really in the faith. In case you need counseling, my contacts are on the screen. Let me put my contacts on the screen, on the screen uh, even in the description box. Or you can visit our website, tnwcfen.org, and message me. If you have issues with your salvation, and you want to get it right with God, you need counseling, or you need prayer, or you're not saved, that's why you want to give your life to Jesus Christ. I am available to talk to you and pray with you. Salvation is free, free of charge. And I don't tell people to sow seed into my life, or sow seed into my ministry. I don't do that. Because you can preach the truth and preach money at the same time. The two things don't go together. They can travel along. If you are not saved, please reconcile yourself to God as soon as possible today. Let us pray. God, thank you for your word. Thank you for today's teaching. Give you praise. We adore you. We appreciate you, Lord. 
receive all the glory and all the praise in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord God, help your people, help your children to examine themselves. Help us to really be sincere to ourselves, to examine ourselves to see if we are really saved, if we are really in the faith. Help us, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Today, Lord, we rebuke every power of darkness that is dragging us out of your path. We rebuke them. We curse demonic spirits monitoring us to drag us from your path. We destroy them in the name of Jesus Christ. We bind them all. Oh Lord God, I pray for your children that you take away troubles and sicknesses, problems from their lives, from their marital lives, from their homes, from their businesses, from their works, in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray for as many who have been supporting this ministry, that you will release abundance, abundance of blessings upon their lives. May they never lack, in the name of Jesus. Those who are willing to give, but they don't have, Lord, release your blessings upon their lives too. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayer. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for those of you who have been sharing our videos and recommending our ministry to people. Thank you and God bless you. Please share this video. Share it with someone. And also, if you are led to support our ministry, please feel very free to do so. Let me put the account details on the screen. The account details are on the screen. Uh, please support our ministry. And the good Lord will bless you abundantly in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you and God bless you. See you next time. Bye-bye.